Hello and welcome to Now is the Time. I'm Mary Crowley. On today's program, I have Apostle Fred Berry. And there's some really exciting things happening on April 9th at the Coliseum in Los Angeles called Azusa Now. Fred has been a pastor, a revivalist, and he, for 20 years, has carried the mantle of the Azusa Street Mission in downtown Los Angeles. So we're going to be talking about these exciting things that are coming up in just a few short weeks, actually. Welcome to the program, Fred. Amen. Well, thank you, Mary. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, so now, a lot of people might not know what Azusa Street is and was. Right. Can you explain for the viewers a little bit about Azusa Street? Right. Well, for, the, for you uh, uh, non-Pentecostals, Azusa Street is the Western world's version of Jerusalem. This is where God poured out His Spirit again, a refreshing, a restoration of prophetic significance that birthed the classical Pentecostal and now the charismatic, the, all of your spirit-filled movement churches are connected with Azusa Street around the world. And so it's, it's the well of revival for the classical Pentecostal churches. Well, and of course, you know the story. There was a, a, an African-American man named William right. Seymour who that's came right. here in 1906. That's right. Yeah, and so that story is significant because it was during a time in America it was very racial tolerant time, I mean intolerant time. Many black folks were lynched and, and killed just for even looking at a Caucasian. So this ideal of God, that we're all one in Christ Jesus, began to spread and God used a one-eyed black preacher to accent that movement that it doesn't matter what your color is, if you are used by God, everybody needs to flow together in unity. Well, and back in the day, in my research of the history of Azusa, yeah. They were actually hanging black men, That's you know, right. in the parks in Los Angeles. Right, in Los Angeles. You still have some of the old locations, still have racial covenants, you know, land covenants would say you can't move into a certain neighborhood. So these are all the, the historical foundation of America that God gave us the answer to 110 years ago. He gave us the answer to the racial problem that we're now experiencing again. I mean, we had race rights and in uh, Ferguson and Baltimore and I mean this is 2016 and we're still talking about the same problem and so but God gave us the answer 110 years ago with William Seymour the Azusa Street Revival and the church walking together in unity. Now I've known Lou Ingle you know for probably 15 years or more right. and Lou's a great guy he's been going around the country and around the world That's doing right. these events called The Call, where they've been That's fasting right. and praying and repenting right. for God yeah. to move in our country again, in That's our world. Right. Yeah. So now let's explain the story about how The Call Azusa uh, came into being. Well, uh, you know, it, well, the end of the moment was that it was a prophetic word that came out of my mouth to Lou that said, The Call Azusa is still waiting for you. Now, we have to back up six years to kind of put this in focus. In 2008, we know that that was a very tumultuous time in America. That was the economic crash. That was the rise of a man named Obama, who soon became our president. And at that time, Lou was doing the call in San Diego. It was very successful. Prop 8 had a successful run in California. We stopped same-sex marriage. We declared marriage between a man and a woman. And we saw from that moment on that things began to change. And I believe part of it is our fault, because we did not come together in unity. So Lou wrote a letter. That letter is what caused me to say, okay, Lou, I know you, I know your heart, but this letter is going to cause more division than it's going to cause unity. He wrote a letter to the black church. That was the first problem. We're not a black church. We're one church. We're in different ethnic divisions. We have different flows and streams, but we're one church. And so that message went out, and it became the firestorm that caused the African-American community to say, see, they don't really want to walk in unity with us. They think we're different than them. And so the whole Obama phenomenon came because of rejection, a hardness of heart. And so I told Lou. He didn't listen. He didn't want to listen. So for six years, he wouldn't talk to me. And so in that moment, 2014, I'm in Brazil. We do an incredible amount of revival work in Brazil. And Brazil is a very racial, tolerant society. Everybody's mixed together. They don't have the problems we have in America. Well, and there's also been a lot of you know, history of revival in Brazil. Right, absolutely. And that revival came from Azusa Street. 
The largest stream of, of churches in Brazil is the Assemblies of the Oaths. They come directly from Azusa Street, Gunnar Wingham and Daniel Berg, the Brazilians and all the two missionaries sent from Chicago to Brazil. And then the church was born and the Pentecostal movement spread. Now it's, it's poised to eclipse the nation as the number one Christian faith in the nation. By 2016, Brazil will be majority evangelical, Pentecostal, charismatic, tongue-talking believers, if you can believe that. Wow, that's amazing. So that's here amazing. you're down in Brazil. I'm down in Brazil. And I've heard the story. Actually, that's Lou right. Ingalls said the Holy Spirit told him that's to call right. Fred Berry. That's exactly right. So Lou is doing the call in Berkeley, California. I'm in Brazil preparing to leave America. I've already I've, I've packed my bags. I saw Ferguson coming before it came in Baltimore. I'm from Baltimore, so I saw all of this coming. And so I said, God, I'm done. I'm finished. You know, I'm moving. I'm packing my bags. I'm telling my wife we're going to buy property. Brazil loves us and financially support us. And so that was the, my heart at the time. I'm done. I washed my hands, shake the dust off my feet. I preached. I told people what needs to be done. They don't believe me. I'm done. So and Lou was actually up in Berkeley. I was actually at the call Berkeley. Right. So he's in the call, and he's in his hotel room, he tells me. And he says, the Holy Spirit tells him to call me. So when he calls me on my cell phone, and normally I don't even have my cell phone on when I'm in the nations. I normally use my Wi-Fi and don't, don't answer the phone. But it rings, and I see it's Lou's number. I've had a new Lou's number for years. And so it rings, and I look at it, and I go, oh, no, 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 no. Not after six years. I've made up my mind. I'm moving to Brazil. I'm done with America. And it, I said, this is going to voicemail. I'm not answering that call. And it went to my voicemail, and the Holy Spirit filled my room. I mean, the presence was so strong. It was, it was strong enough to scare you because I hadn't sensed that kind of presence in a while. I mean, I've been in revival meetings, but a personal time in a hotel room, I didn't even know God liked the hotels. He got me. He's there. And he speaks to me. He says these words. He says, answer the call. And, I, you know, you can argue with God. I, I, I said, no, you know what these guys have said about me. You know what's going on in, in America. I'm done with America. And so in my hardness of heart, I said no to God. I mean, it was God. I know it was him. So the call came in, but you let it go to voicemail. I let it go to voicemail. And the Lord basically told you to, to call to back. Answer. And so then I, you know, you can reason with God. I said, well, okay, I will call him when I get back to America. Because, you know, my wife doesn't like me to make long-distance phone calls. And, you know, this is expensive. So I reasoned. I said, okay, I'll call him when I come back to America. And the Holy Spirit said again, answer the call. And God is so gentle. When he wants something done, he's very gentle, but he's very firm. And so I could feel the firmness of this suggestion, <laughs> answer the call. And so uh, I said, uh, okay, uh, and I made the call. When I called Lou, Lou was in his hotel room weeping and crying, and he began to repent to me and apologize to me. I, I mean, I'm shocked. I'm going, this has been six years. Now you're going to call me? And so then at that moment, I received, I forgave, I then, uh, uh, you know, told Lou, I accept your apology. But then out of my heart, out of my spirit, mm -hmm. came the word of the Lord. Now that's part of what is, you know, you have to be familiar with God when he speaks. Because sometimes you'll say stuff, you know, it's not you, it's God. And God spoke, he said, Lou, the call is still waiting for you. And Lou, I didn't know the significance of it. I didn't know Lou was even thinking about the call. And so he's, you had asked, had you told Lou about doing a call Azusa before? No, never, never talked to Lou about it. We hadn't talked in six years. Okay. So we had no communication. And so when this word came out of my heart to Lou, he said he hit him like an arrow, like a, like a hammer. And then so when I, we came back in 2014, we met, we reconciled, we had coffee, and then we began to talk. And he be, said, you know, we better pray. And I said, okay, I want you to come and speak at our event, our Azusa Fest event in 2015. I wanted to see if the reconciliation was real. And so when he came and he spoke and he brought his team, that sealed in my heart. Okay, it's really sincere that this reconciliation is going to work. And we began to work together. And then out of that, you know, the call of Azusa was birthed, but the Colosseum, he still needed some confirmation. There were many other confirmations that came alongside you know, Fly United. I mean, there are many stories that come out of that. And that's how the Azusa now, Call Azusa, was birthed. And so we've been doing Azusa Fest, our gospel music celebration, for 10 years. But we took it away from America. We took it to Brazil. We took it to Ghana. We took it to Japan. We've been all over the world with our celebration. 
and the Lord told us to bring it back, so we brought it back in 2015, and here we are, 2016, expecting 100,000 people or more to return to Azusa Street from all over the world. I mean, this well, now, is amazing. So on April 9th, which is the 110-year anniversary right. of the Azusa Street outpouring, That's right. there's going to be 100, 110,000 people coming to the USC right. Coliseum My God. for an all-day event of That's praying, right. fasting, That's right. and repenting before God. That's right. It's not a show. I mean, many people, you know, I tell people, I, I warn people, I say, listen, you need to understand, this meeting was not called by Lou. It wasn't called by Fred. This is a sovereign move of the Holy Spirit. Even the people that are coming have changed their schedule. I mean, people are hearing from God from all over the world to come back to Azusa Street. So it's going to be an all-day event, April 9th. We're going to be in the Coliseum. We're already on track. From what I understand, we've already hit 50,000 pre-registered. Now, I was a part of the Centennial in 2006 where we had 50,000 total that came to L.A., and that was chaos. I mean, that was crazy. And, but that started with 1,000 pre-registered. So if we can have 50,000 pre-registered, we really could fill the Coliseum. Well, we have, you have a clip that you brought that okay, I yeah. want to show that clip. That's right. So let's run that clip right now, please. And you know this Hello, everybody. It's Apostle Fred Berry inviting you to the Azusa Fest and a call Azusa celebration. April 7, 8, 9, and 10. April 9th, we're going to be in the Coliseum with Lou Engel and the call celebrating the 110th anniversary of the Azusa Street Revival. Where the color line was washed away in the blood, where the Holy Spirit baptized black, white, Hispanic, native, Asian into one body, we're going to call the men and women, young and old, from all over the nation to gather on the 110th anniversary of Azusa Street to pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit to baptize us into one body. We're inviting you to Los Angeles April 7, 8, 9, and 10. April 9th will be in the Coliseum and 100,000 people or more are going to be celebrating and worshiping the Lord, remembering God's goodness in Los Angeles. April 7, 8, 9, and 10. Visit our website and we'll tell you more. Wow, that's amazing. Amen. This is so cool. Well, I'm a part of this. I mean, right. we're going to be at the Bonnie Bray House on the 7th. You know, we're, right. we're praying. We're going to be there uh, as every, I mean, the 8th, there's an event that's right. before. What are they having, a right. Uh, tent? Right. Well, what we're planning to do, because the Azusa Street location, the building is no more. It's only a plaza now. So we, in the years that we've been down there, 20 years or, or more now, we have found the actual footprint of the mission. And so in the early days of Azusa Fest, we just put the tent up on the property, lined the footprint of the building and have church. And so that's what we plan to do again. And we have many different worship teams. We're going to create an atmosphere. This is a pre-Azusa Now event. Our purpose for this is to create an atmosphere where God can begin to move by signs, wonders, the preaching of the gospel. It's very easy when the Holy Spirit is involved. And so... This is part of our work is to prepare the ground, the actual location of the Azusa Street Mission. So if they go to our, Azusa, our website, AzusaFest or AzusaStreetMission.org, but AzusaFest.com is our new website. And so that will have all of the things that we're going to do during the day. And then at night, we're going to have prophetic activation. We'll be right next door at Union Church. And we're going to have some speakers that are from Christian International. We have our Brazilian team coming. Uh, our video there was subtitled in Portuguese because the Brazilians really believe that the 100-year prophecy of a greater Azusa Street revival that Seymour prophesied and was prophesied later by many other leaders, that that thing is about to be manifested. So we've got hundreds of pastors and significant apostolic and prophetic leaders, uh, Bola Genevi, which is Snowball Church. It's a huge church in Brazil, and Apostle Duque and his wife are coming, which is another apostolic church. And so this is our flyer, and so you can get this at our website, azusafest.com or azusastreetmission.org. It tells all the things of our apostle, Apostle Bill Hammonds, who is the father of the prophetic, is going to be there, and we're going to actually commission a new network we have Christian International, which is the apostolic network of which Bill Hammonds is a part of. But Bill Hammonds has already prophesied. He's a network of networks. So Fred and Wilma, we're called God's Living Flintstones. We're going to open up. We're going to reestablish the Azusa Street 
apostolic network. And so on Friday night, we're going to have we're going to have a lunch on Friday with Bill Hammond. So if anybody wants to have lunch with Apostle Bill Hammond, this is a lunch, and you go to our website. And then at night, we're going to have our apostolic prophetic uh, commissioning, and Bill Hammond is going to speak with us, and many apostolic leaders are going to speak with us about the future for the Azusa Street movement. Well, you know, this is really interesting because a lot of you watching might not know that William Seymour had a prophecy that 100 years after Azusa Street, That's right. that there was going to be a greater anointing and a greater outpouring than Azusa. That's and right. everyone thought it was 2006, but God right. showed me that Azusa pretty much died in 1915. That's right. Now and God showed exactly me it was at the death of it that's right. that the Lord was going to re-spark the new that's thing. That's right. Now, you know, that's interesting you say that because Seymour, they said, died a man with a broken heart. He really thought that the movement had failed. I mean, because of the division and the way it ended that, you know, essentially denominations were born out of that. Church of God in Christ was the first Pentecostal denomination, but then out of that came Assemblies of God in 1913. And so when these denominations splintered on racial lines, Church of God in Christ was black, Assemblies of God was white, and, and all these different groups began to come out of it racially separate. Seymour was very depressed, and then they rejected him. And so he literally died a man with a broken heart. His wife took over the ministry for him, and then it was all over by then, and he died of a heart attack. So, and he I'm, was only in his 50s, right? He was only in his 50s. So we're, we're, I'm excited to say, and we're going to give him his due. we got some awards and things like that. We're going to do proclamations to honor Seymour and the legacy and the heritage. And so this year we're giving the William Seymour Award to Bishop T.D. Jakes for his heart of reconciliation through the Reconciled Church Movement. So we got a lot of things coming that we're going to do. So we're excited about it. Is T.D. Jakes going to be there? We've invited him, but I, ble I believe he's going to be in South Africa, so he's going to send, send a representative. So, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, as you talked about these color lines, you know, right. we're seeing in the country, it's not just, you know, blacks and whites. That's or, right. It's all over the map. That's right. There's something stirring in the, in the nation right now. That's right. And you were talking about Joel, chapter yeah, 2. Exactly. Now, this is for most Pentecostals. Joel, chapter 2, verse 28, is a classical revival scripture. It was prophesied in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 19. And so it talks about God pouring out his spirit on all flesh and dreams, visions, ideas. All of those things are all part of revival. Whenever revival comes, these things are birthed. I mean, the economic prosperity that America is experiencing is because of the revival that opened the heavens. And, you know, if you look at 1906 when the revival came, out of that came the Model T car, the airplane. These are all precursors to our industrial revolution. And so that's part of revival, but before we get there, there's something we need to look. I want to give a scripture to everybody. I know we have a short amount of time, but I just want us to really, you know, be prepared for what God wants to do. Because Joel chapter 2 is clear. It says, and it shall come to pass afterward. So that's something that happens after we do something. And I believe Joel chapter 2 verse 1 declares it to us. It says, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord come, for it is nigh and it is near. And we need to realize God's going to come to the house of God first. Judgment begins at the house of God. Another scripture in Joel chapter 2 is verse 15. It says, blow the trumpet of Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. That's really what the call of Zeus, Zeus now is all about. It's fasting and praying. It says, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. So let the priests and the ministers weep before the porch and the altar and let them say, spare your people, O Lord. Give not your heritage to reproach and the heathen should not rule over us. And I believe that's really uh, the heart of, heart of God right now is to restore our heritage. But we got to cry out to God. We got to repent. We got to grab hold of the altar. We've got to look at things that we've done to keep his presence. Uh, his, his, I believe he wanted to part of the revival in 2006, but it wasn't time. We weren't ready. And so this is part of the heart of God is that we've got to look in the mirror of the word, examine our hearts, and realize it's us. We've been the ones standing in the need of prayer. We've been the one holding back revival through our proud look, our racism, our own divisions, our celebrity status of preachers. We've got to get back to the basic stuff. On the altar, on our knees, crying out to God, and God will answer off. And afterwards, 
I will pour out my spirit. His spirit on all flesh. Well, that's amazing, Fred. Well, listen, I thank you for coming. And I want to encourage the viewers here to go on to azuzafest.org. And it's spelled A Z U S A F E S T dot org. And oh, you dot can com. register. Or dot, dot com? com. Oh, okay. Azuzafest.com. Okay, azuzafest.com. And you can register. People are flying in from all over the world. All over the world. Uh, but even if you can't, are they going to be live streaming this? I believe, Lou, I think God Channel is going to broadcast it live. We're going to probably stream it on Zion Radio, which is a Hispanic television network. We're partnering with them to do a broadcast from Azusa Street. So that's part of our work is to bring different streams and different ethnic groups together. And so God TV will do it internationally, and uh, Zion TV and radio is going to do it locally here for all of us and in Spanish. Well, I know, uh, you know, Fred, you know that I'm working on this Lonnie Frisbee motion picture. And God right. spoke to me 20 years ago that a greater move of God was coming than the Jesus movement. That's right. And I know that there's been so many things that God has had us do, the fasting, praying, going to different areas. That's right. You know, the Lord's been opening up these portals in prayer. And That's right. He's bringing us all together as one. That's right. That's and the key, unity. This is the unity key. That's so right. thanks for coming. Amen. For those of you watching, now, one last thing. How can they get a hold of you if they want to email you? Okay, if they want to email me, they can, everything is listed. Our contact is on azusafest.com. So all our contact information is there. You can call me in my office, 323-692-7268. Uh, That's 323-692-7268. Call Fred Berry or Wilma, and we'll return your call, and we'll share with you more what we're doing. It's the Flintstones of Christianity. Yeah, God's living Christianity. <laughs> but anyway, well, listen, we just have Amen. a minute left. I want to encourage you. In fact, I feel that we're supposed <coughs> to pray. There's many of you watching around the world in Egypt, in some of the Middle Eastern yeah. countries, and there's been a lot of racial tensions, ISIS, and all these crises yeah. and devices that, that the enemy has used to yeah. bring separation. Let's say a prayer of agreement yeah. right now, Fred. Amen. That, that all the things around the world, That's the right. globe, that God is going to bring unity among right. the different ethnicities. Let's start with those of you who believe. Let us walk together in unity. The enemy is coming to use any device to separate us. Because when we walk in unity, God comes. There's a commanded blessing. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for the commanded blessing that will be brought upon us as we dwell together in unity. And then as, as we come together in unity and love, one for another, the world's going to know by our love, one for another, that the Father did send the Son, and revival's going to spread miracles, signs, and wonders, and those that don't believe are going to see our love, and they're going to say they want that, and people are going to come, they're going to run to the house of God. In amen. Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, listen, Fred, thanks for coming on the Thank show. You. Thanks for watching Now is the Time. If the program blessed you, I'd like you to go to my website. At, it should be on the screen, but marycrowley.com spelled M-E-R-I-C-R-O-U-L-E-Y dot com. And you can also go, there's a donate uh, right on the front. You can donate. If you really were blessed today, you can help uh, underwrite some of the ministry things that we do here at the Way TV Network and the Cross TV. And just know that the USC Coliseum, April 9th, 100,000, 110,000 people are going to be praying and fasting for the Lord to move again on this globe with a mighty outpouring of over, we were expecting God to bring in billions of people to come Amen. into the kingdom. That's right. Thanks for watching. Now's the time. We'll see you next time. Amen.